So welcome back or welcome to the Friday vlog series where once again, we're gonna break this video into two main parts. Number one, we're gonna talk about a very scary and alarming double carbon wheel fail. That's right, both the front and the rear wheel failed almost simultaneously after being purchased 11 months prior, brand new from a New York City bike shop. And this occurred on the 5th of May 2020 at Bear Mountain in the New York City region. And number two, I'm actually celebrating two years on YouTube this week, so I'm gonna take a small portion of airtime at the very end to thank everyone for your support. So number one, it was a few weeks ago, I received a message from a channel supporter on my Instagram account. And this channel supporter, he lives in New York City. He was asking me my thoughts on Carbon Will sharing a photo of a recent incident he had on a set of Cosmic Pro Carbon USTs for rim brake bikes. As soon as I saw this Instagram message and the photos, I was like, bloody hell, that is insane and very scary. And while he was asking me questions about my thoughts on Carbon Wheels, I had some questions for him. I wanted to know, was he all right? Where and how did this happen? And who's taking responsibility for what is essentially a near death situation? Now, I don't feel it's appropriate that I share this channel supporter's name with you. So for the purpose of this video, let's call him John. Now, John kindly accepted to jump on a Zoom call with me. So I'll share a small portion of that conversation with you. He also kindly provided a number of photos, which I'll share, but please be aware that some viewers may find these photos alarming. And just a heads up for the small portion of people that tend to get critical in these situations. Let's not ride a high horse and get judgmental on things that should have been done differently. This is real. It's happened and John has been kind enough to share his experience with us so we can all take learnings from this. Now the next person I teed up a conversation with was a renowned carbon fiber expert, Raul Lucia, who has a background in quality assurance and the aerospace industry before turning to the Australian Institute of Sport for five years, working with the Aussie cycling team and then in 2008, transitioned solely to bikes with now over 10 years in carbon fiber design, repair and quality assurance experience. And Raul gives us an outstanding hypothesis of what most likely occurred in this instance. And just be aware that he's got his own YouTube channel as well, which I'll link to below. And many have probably seen him on other channels in the past, such as the Cycling Mavens and Shane Miller's YouTube channels. And lastly, before we get into these two discussions, I did find myself in quite a deep Mavic, that being the company rabbit hole after these pictures were shared with me. And for those of you who are unaware of what is going on with Mavic at the moment, I'll share some interesting information with you following the two discussions. So let's get into it. First discussion with John. Just be aware that he's actually okay. External to some bruises and some scratches and a concussion that he experienced after the incident, he actually is walking right now. In fact, he went for his first bike ride a few days ago after the incident, which is remarkable. So let's get into the discussion. We start descending and there's two sections. So I'll I passed one section, one section going down is about 10%. And then the last section um, is a little bumpy. So that has some potholes. And I'm going about like 45 miles an hour. And my back wheel completely, like it breaks. The, the uh, tire blew out. And then my front wheel, while I'm pressing the brakes, my front wheel hits another pothole and my rims completely shattered in three pieces. So I end up landing on my fork and my friends were telling me that I did four or five flips all the way to I, I stopped. And um, they told me that you was, I was unconscious for like three minutes. And after that, I hardly remember what happened. So pretty full on, huh? Now just know that the photos I was able to share with you there were taken by John's friends who were cycling with him at the time and took them as material or evidence in case of worst case scenarios. But luckily for John, he's actually okay. Now what is the likely cause of this situation? Let's hear from Raul. And what's interesting is I asked Raul, how many times have you seen this in your 10 plus year experience in the industry? And what I found surprising is he said less than a handful. So it is rare. 
So let's get into the conversation and I've put some subtitles there just because the Zoom recording wasn't overly clear. So let's get into it. Well, the highest, the highest temperature that you're really going to get reliably out of these resins is about 180 degrees Celsius. And um, you, can get, you can get 250, 280 degrees Celsius with, with breaking on a, on a decent descent. That, that temperature component, that temperature needs to be dissipated. And what happens is as you heat air, it expands. So you're getting, you're generating more pressure at that, uh, at that tire bead interface as the, the rim is losing structural integrity due to the, the resin getting hot. So, and that, so then what typically happens is the, the tire just blows off because the pressure increases the material gets softer and so the, the side wall blows out. Then Rail goes on to discuss two variables that increase energy. Number one is speed. So as you know, John was traveling at about 45 miles per hour down this hill. That's about 72 kilometers per hour. And he also weighs 100 kilograms or 220 pounds, which is actually well within the advised wheel limits that Mavic suggests for these wheels. So back to Rail. So the kinetic energy in that situation is is very significant. And so you, you're looking at a kinetic energy of roughly 24,000 joules of energy. Now on the front wheel, you've probably got a similar thing happening where once once the resin starts getting getting soft, um, then the front wheel starts losing some of this structural integrity as well. And, and then you have a case where, you know, you hit, you hit the pothole and, you know, which is a, an overload situation, which if, if the rim was um, fully structurally sound, it may survive that without any issue. But because now it's heat compromised, then you start, you start getting into dangerous territory. And so with that impact, you've basically got that, that, that impact energy um, and to give you a ballpark when the, the UCI have a, a wheel impact drop test which the wheel needs to survive to um, to be able to be sold as a UCI approved wheel to be used in competition etc now that the, the energy the impact energy in that drop test is 40 joules so four zero joules um, you know, you can in the energy that we're talking about, the kinetic energy of a rider going down the road at that speed, at that mass, you've got twenty four thousand odd joules. That's just the reality of it. You know, things don't fail when you, you know, when you're just taking it easy. It's it's when you're pushing it hard. Um, there was a, there was a famous um, photo from uh, I can't remember which race it was. But it might have even been the tour, but it had Cavendish. Off the uh, off the front in a, you know, like a bunch sprint coming into the finish, and his wheel just folded in half, and and he went down and, and brought the bunch down. Um, yeah, it sort of really highlights some of this stuff. So I'll provide a link to the full discussion we had together, but just know that Raoul goes on to talk about other variables such as braking techniques and the distribution of heat across both wheels, and also the consideration of the structural integrity of the wheel before that particular day. So there is a possibility that the wheel might have already had some damage, which is a reminder to us all to examine our wheels and our bikes with our eyes before we go out onto the road. Although unfortunately, carbon damage can often be internal. So the only way you can fully examine internal structural issues is to visit someone like Raoul. Now, as much as it pains me to say it, based off a video I did on this channel about three weeks ago now about rim brake bikes, Rail did indicate that by running disc brakes, the likelihood of this happening is significantly reduced. He also indicated that alloy wheels are a much more structurally sound wheel, particularly when the compromised situations occur, such as heat and weight. And certainly speaking with John, he's indicated that moving forward, he's probably gonna be sticking with alloy rims. And I did ask him about what's actually happening with Mavic 
through his local bike shop. And according to him, Mavic are moving factories, so they're still yet to hear back about warranties and getting refunded or maybe getting a new set of wheels, which is a little bit disappointing to hear because if I was in charge of Mavic, I would be getting onto this situation straight away and be sending a letter of care to John as well, which takes me to my last point. I don't mean to throw Mavic under the bus here. It just so happens that the company is currently in receivership. And if you go online, you'll find some interesting details about the French company that is roughly 130 years old. Cycling Tips article as well indicates that there is some confusion who actually owns Mavic at the moment as well. So if you're looking to purchase some carbon wheels in the not too distant future, I might consider exploring some other brands. So I just wanted to thank John for sharing his experiences with us. And it's remarkable that he's come out of it with hardly any injuries. So thanks so much for sharing. I've certainly learned a lot through this process, John, and also Raul for coming on and sharing his expertise about what most likely happened here and ways we can mitigate this from potentially happening to us. So that's pretty much it. Let's get into the rest of the video. So yeah, quick coffee before school. Let's oh, go. Yeah. Let's Goodbye. Go. <laughs> okay, you're being silly now. Alright, love you. See you tomorrow. I'll see you at the gate. See you tomorrow. I mean, sorry, see, see you at the oval see you, gate. See you this afternoon. At the oval gate. Oval I'll gate see you here. tomorrow at the oval gate. So just arrived home from dropping the kids off. On the way to school, we stop at a coffee shop, which you just saw. And I've got this weird strategy with Ruby. She doesn't like putting her shoes on at home. So what I do is say, grab your bags, grab your shoes, and we get in the car, and then we put them on at the local cafe before school. And it's weird and it's strange, but it works. So, you know, sometimes with young kids, you just got to do weird and strange things if they work. And that's one of my weird and strange things. So Two years on the channel gives me a, a small opportunity to reflect on what's been going on and really what I wanted to do here very quickly is just thank everyone for your support over on the channel. It, uh, it means a lot. YouTube is great. I love it a lot, but it can be hard work at times. And to have um, such a strong and growing contingent of channel supporters really keeps me motivated. So that's pretty much it. I'll leave you with the video, the first video I published on the channel when I launched it. It's my cycling story in under three minutes. I'll put it up here somewhere if you want to watch that, and I'll catch you all in the next video.